I am Bethany Warnches, real estate agent with Addison Jones, and you are watching Tuesday Talks with Bethany, where I answer real estate FAQs. Today, the topic I'm going to be covering is what costs are involved in buying a home other than just the down payment. But before I jump into that, I just want to do a happy birthday shout out to my husband. I sent him off to work today with chocolate covered espresso beans and teriyaki beef jerky, um, which are some of his favorite little snacks. So if you see my Ben today, wish him a happy birthday. All right. Let's jump in. What costs are involved in buying a home other than just your down payment? Now, this is not going to be an all-inclusive list for you, but it's going to give you some of the most common costs involved in buying a home. So you're excited, you've saved up your down payment, you think you're ready to go. Let me teach you a little more. So. As soon as you get an accepted offer, you are going to have to send over earnest money to the seller. What is earnest money? It is a good faith deposit that you are putting down to show the seller that you are serious. You're getting some skin in the game. How much is earnest money? Around here, a good guide is about 1% of purchase price. So if you are buying a $150,000 home, then maybe about around $1,500 would be expected for earnest money. So that is a chunk of money right off the bat that you are going to be send sending over. Now, as long as you do close on your deal, then that would be credited back to you at closing. Now let's talk about all the contingencies you've put in the offer as a buyer and what you are going to need to pay for. Did you decide to do a home inspection? As a buyer, you pay for that home inspection. Around here in our local Fond du Lac area, around $350 for a home inspection is normal. Now, if the home is a greater square footage, then that price can go up. Also, if you hire a home inspector who's maybe not local, maybe coming up from the Milwaukee area or something, then it could be more than that $350. Did you decide to do any other type of inspections? Or after you had your regular inspection, did the inspector call for a follow-up inspection? So any of those follow-up inspections or inspections where you just ask for right off the bat for a professional to come out, you are also paying for them. So say for example, um, you knew the furnace was 28 years old and so you were concerned about it right off the bat and you wanted an HVAC person to come out. That is another cost on you. So the home inspection and any other professional inspections or follow-up inspections, buyer, you are paying for them. Did you decide to do a radon test? Around here, most of our local home inspectors can conduct radon tests. Now those are about 75 to $100. So there's another chunk of money for you. What if the radon test high? Well, what happens is pre-negotiated in the offer for how it gets addressed if it does test high. And then finally, what about any other testing? What if you went into a bathroom and you thought you saw the ceiling was covered in mold and you wanted to hire an environmental specialist to come out and look at it? Again, that's a cost that is on you, the buyer. So all of these costs, the more inspections, follow-up inspections, professional inspectors, testing that you do, all of these costs are on you as a buyer. 
So you need to prepare for that if you plan to do any of those. Now let's talk about country properties. Oftentimes when you live in the country, you have a well and a septic. A well, you often test the quality of the water as well as the components to make sure it's working properly. And then a septic, um, it may have to get pumped depending on the inspector you're using and then inspect it as well. So there are more costs right there with the well and septic. Now, unlike the home inspection, the well and septic, it is pre-negotiated in the offer who is going to pay for those um, inspections. Finally, one last thing about a country property is, is it going to need a survey? Do you want a survey? So say you are buying a property, it has eight acres, the sellers never had a survey done, and you are really concerned about the property lines. So you want a survey done. Well, that is pre-negotiated in the offer too. Maybe the seller agrees to help you out with it, but maybe it's just another cost that you, as a buyer, have to pay for. Now that we've got through all of the tests and all of the inspections, what about repairs? Who pays for repairs? Repairs are negotiated between a buyer and a seller, but one thing for you to remember is that we are in a seller's market. The seller has the upper hand and there's a good chance they're not going to repair every single little thing that's going wrong. Um, so just be prepared that you as a buyer might need to be ready to take on some repairs as well. Did you ask for a home warranty or do you want a home warranty? Now you can ask a seller to pay for a home warranty um, or you can pay for one yourself or you don't have one at all. Um, if you decide to pay for one as a buyer, that could be a cost of $600 to $800 as well. So another cost for you as a buyer. Then a question I have for you is, are you in a customer relationship with your agent or are you in a client relationship with your agent? If you are in a client relationship with your agent, then you will need to pay commission because you are in a buyer agency agreement. If you are in a customer relationship, then you won't need to worry about it. So do you have commission as another cost for you to worry about? You are buying a house, which means you are going to need home insurance. Your lender is going to require you to have home insurance. So you are going to have to pay for a year of home insurance. Also, you now are going to have property taxes. Are you ready to pay for your property taxes? And last of all, your lender is going to have closing costs that you are going to need to pay. This may involve the lender title policy, the appraisal, and many other lender fees. So ultimately, I gave you a list of some of the most common expenses for a buyer in a real estate transaction. Again, this does not encompass all of the expenses out there, but it's just letting you know um, to be prepared for more than just your down payment. Join me next week when I talk more about what it costs a seller to sell a home.